man, I just love the opportunity we get Carl to talk and have great, meaningful conversations with loan officers across the country. And this week, you know, it, here's something I heard that I wrote down because it really struck a chord with me. And it was, hey, what can I do to sell my worth to agents? Mm. And, and, and it was one of the most genuine and sincere conversations. And when I heard that, I just thought, wow. Um, and, and I can only imagine what your thought is on it, but I, here's what I thought we'd talk about. And I, yep. and it's, it's a topic I think we have to help our industry with and the people we're with every day. Carl, you're enough. Mm-hmm. Like there's not a selling of your worth. And so what would you say to that? And, 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 and listen, this is like in my mind, I was able to help encourage and really walk this person down a path where it was like, wow, I'm enough. I've got what it takes. There's no selling to, you know, it's not like I one day I'll make enough calls and they'll like me enough and I'll be worthy enough. But I think it's something that as an industry, we struggle with. And I know this is something that's a real hot button for you because this is a big part of who we are, like knowing that you're enough and you're worthy and you've got what it takes. And there's one of you and a million of them. So what do we say to that? Well, I think you hit it right on the the nail right on the head. That was my first thought was, is that's somebody that has, which I'd say most of us struggle with this. Uh, we we all have, man. Yeah. Are you kidding? Yeah. Uh, where it's, I'm not important enough to talk mm. to these people. I'm not, you know, there, there's a, a great movie mm. uh, that I really enjoyed watching uh, called The Help. Did you ever watch that one? The I Help. didn't. No. Brother, that was a fantastic movie. Yeah. And um and in this movie, uh this young girl, I don't know, she was like 3, I think, something like that, 3 or 4. Her nanny uh every night when she put her to bed, her nanny would say, "You is smart. Mm. You is beautiful." Yeah. And you is important. Mm. Mm. and that little girl heard that now this was a movie right but that right. little girl heard that over and over mm. and over mm. and over mm. and um and had that not been a, a fictional movie um i bet that that little girl grew up believing or not believing knowing mm-hmm. she was smart mm and uh beautiful right in her own eyes uh and and important yeah and i think just overriding all those old tapes yeah you know where my fourth grade teacher uh made me sit out in the hallway to shame me one time Mm -hmm. and uh that one time that this person's this adult uh that i respected said this or Mm -hmm. said that Mm -hmm. i I think it's just rewriting those tapes and uh i don't know if that's where you thought this was going to go no brother that's 100 percent. like i had no agenda and that that's what i want to hear like talk talk to us about rewriting the tapes and by the way like when you just said that it made like i just thought about my kids just even being so intentional with ethan and lucas and ellie and just Hey, Bubba, you're smart, man. You're handsome. Dude, you're important. The The importance of that, because you know what happens, Carl? I'll, I'll never forget when you just said the words that somebody said, a man I loved dearly, and I still do. He's a dear friend to this day. But I'll never forget, I was making a life move. I was moving from Beaumont mm-hmm. to Houston for a, a life transition. And, you know, and he he was a he's a cowboy, just a, a man who's been a part of my life since I was 12 years old. And you know what the only words I walked away hearing him say? Tell me. Don't screw this up, kid. Mm. And the amount of pressure I felt from that. And listen, he didn't mean anything by it. Yeah. He just he just was trying to give some good old kind of father, because he was probably yeah. one of three strong men in my life in mm. that season. And still to this day, my wife, I mean, look, we love him to death. But, you know, that that planted so deep in me where I was so paralyzed, like, what if I screw this up? What if yeah. I screw this up? And, better, and, better, it, better not to do it at all because I might screw it up. Uh, well, that's where the fear of paralysis, like, it's like, well, man, if I'm going to do it, I guess I got to do it right. But what if I screw it up? And I think we all have those words in our head that somebody spoke 
oftentimes people that we admired and they loved us. In fact, and they, I would say always. Those yeah, people. and it was just a twisted, like, and that's why I believe, you know, just this one word, this one phrase, and some reason we just latch on to it. So I've got it. And I'm thinking, man, I, I don't know if I'm good enough. I'm worthy enough. And you may not actually say those words, but you'll say things like, I got to sell my value and worth to these people that I want to work with me. How do we rewrite that? Like, how did you rewrite the programming? Because you've had some too, man. You've heard it. Oh, dude. I I, th I think we all have, and some of us more than others. I think, um, so mine's going to sound kind of weird, but you asked me the question. So no, but through. tell me. Yeah. All right. So I wrote uh, a phrase down, like a, it's a paragraph. Okay. And in the paragraph, so this is going to sound kind of weird. So this is just what I read. I, I don't, I don't. I don't hit the record button and read this to everybody else, right? This is right. what I this is what I say to Carl, and um, and I say it every morning. So there's this little phrase that I have, or this paragraph, um, and I talk. I tell myself, you know, how smart I am, how I help mm. people, mm. Um, how I'm in command of my own destiny. God, God gives me the next breath, but I I decide what I do with that breath. Yeah. And, uh, and that I'm just, I'm, you know, people, uh, people want to meet with me. People want to talk to me. Uh, yeah. I can actually help people. Um, they do better. And so now I'm, I'm part of their DNA going forward. Yeah. And when they teach their kids, wonderful things that I, I'm part of that thing going forward, even though they might not never know my name. Yeah. And so it sounds kind of silly, but it it's very effective for me. Yeah. Yeah. And even, even, in the very beginning, when I read this stuff, I felt like a fake, like, yeah. cause I, I didn't believe it. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, um, but I, I said it anyway. And, and, you know, I think two things happened actually. I think one, I started believing it. And number yeah. two, if I started acting against what I said, I do like, like if I say I'm a person of integrity, yeah, it was just part of my thing. Yeah. Uh, people like to hang out with with me because I'm an honest person and speak with integrity. Right. If I'm getting ready to do something that's not integrity minded. Right. Like I'm getting ready to tell you a lie. Like I'm getting ready to tell you I, I caught 10 fish when I only caught two. Right. As I'm saying that, I go on, oh, wait, wait, wait. I don't do that. Yeah. And so I think one thing is I started believing what I was saying. I'm smart. I'm helpful. And then the other thing is I'm holding myself to a higher standard. So if I'm starting to screw up, I go, wait, that's not what I stand for, Carl. Mm -hmm. And frankly, nobody cares if I caught 10 or two or none. Like it doesn't even matter. Frankly, it might be a better story if I tell them I caught zero, because it'd be a more fun story. Yeah. You know? Um, so so I think I think writing out words of encouragement to yourself. I tell you the other thing too, man. So I I'm fanatical about I I treat my brain. Yeah, like you told, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, say this. Say I this. treat my brain like it's a 10-year-old little girl. Mm -hmm. Talk about And that. what I mean by that is if I'm getting ready to go watch something, I would I bring a 10-year-old little girl to this? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, I can go. Would I bring a 10-year-old little girl to this? No, I got no business being there. So like, like take the news. Yeah. I would not have, uh, do, do I want my 10-year-old little girl to hear all this? negative all this negative oh, yeah. crap yeah. on the news yeah. and the murder and killing and this accident and that happened no and, yeah. I, I i want her to i want her to believe in santa claus a little bit longer i don't know it's just the way i am and somebody else might disagree with this because I, I i want to know what to be wary of no and i get that right we want to protect um uh, but but anyway that's 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 my that's my bar that i set up for myself mm -hmm. is uh if i'm getting ready to expose myself to something would i what I expect, like, I don't watch horror movies. I, yeah, I, I think, yeah. I think it's bad news. I think it, I think it's just not good for my head. Mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, so the movies that uh, uh, myself and the lovely Mrs. White watch is puppy dogs, unicorns, and rainbows. Yeah. So we watch a lot of Hallmark movies, right? I yeah. mean, it sounds silly or, or documentaries and we don't watch the ones where the lions eating the gazelle. Mm -hmm. Like we, we watch the ones where, you know, the, 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 the one we're watching literally just last night, was uh, the how they they go collect little buttons and pieces of trashes to put around their nest to make it look really cute so yeah. that the female one and, and so so we watch you know just kind of fun stuff like that so 
I think what we put in our head matters is everything. Mm -hmm. And I also think, and this is a recent belief, what we put in our body mm. is everything too. Mm. And so, so as far as like knowing that we're worthy, I would say is just go out and start having conversations with people yeah, and stop getting ready for it. Just go do it. Mm -hmm. And you'll see the results of that. And you'll find out that, um, come to find out I actually do help people. Now, mm -hmm. do we, do we, are we a match for everybody? No, no. just like everybody's not a match for me. Like when I go, yeah. I don't know, I don't, I, uh, I don't go to every restaurant every night, but I go to one from time to time. So I rejected 99 restaurants here in Palm Harbor. Actually last night I rejected hundred percent of them because we ate here at the house. Yeah. But when I go to, I didn't reject, I don't hate the other, I just didn't use them. I, I went to this one. So when an agent doesn't use me, this week or next week they don't hate me they just use this other loan officer but the restaurant i did go to they said hey we're having a special this or a special mm -hmm. that or or we're doing something different or you know something like that then it's like oh wow let me go check it out so yeah. so when somebody doesn't use us it doesn't mean anything other than they just didn't use us yeah and it's just having conversations with people you know i tell you something else you know, and I, and I think it's good to help our referral partners, right? I do. I totally do. Yeah. But one thing is, uh, Steve, give me, uh, give me a name of, uh, and not myself, right? But give me, yeah. give me a name of, of a best friend that's not your brother. Uh, my wife. <laughs> and, and not your wife. Give, give, give me, give me a first name. Uh, man, I have such a, uh, Oscar Hernandez. Perfect. Oscar. So now is Oscar, does Oscar come over and mow your yard every Saturday morning? No. 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 Does he, does he come over and wash your car? Nope. Nope. Now if Oscar owned a car dealing, car de detailing company. Yeah. Uh, who would you use to detail your car? hundred percent Oscar. And it's not because he mows your yard. No, no. And he, no. and he doesn't come shine your shoes. Nope. Nope. So why is Oscar your buddy? He's been a trusted friend for 15 years, man. And what and makes him a friend? Um, there's a genuine care and concern for each other. That's it. That's it. Yeah. That's and it. and the, here's the interesting thing too, Carl. We don't we don't talk every day, but when we talk, every time we talk, it's like we just we pick right up where we're at. Yeah. And yeah. And that's the truth. He's actually a realtor and he's helped me sell houses and buy houses and like we do. And together. if you called him up, he would come mow your yard. hundred percent. Like, he would just like you would go mow his hundred percent. Yeah. And, and like, I would we're working together. We, we, we built, yeah. we just met and we hit it off. And I'm like, dude, I like this guy yeah. and vice versa. And I think that's the same thing in our referral relationships. That's a hundred percent. It, it's not yeah. because we go over there and mow their grass and wash their cars. Yeah. And not that there's nothing wrong with doing those things, right? There's nothing wrong with helping and doing the flyers and, and helping them do things. Nothing wrong with that at all. Frankly, there's a lot of right things to do about that. But that's not why they're working with you. They're working with you because of Oscar's your buddy, because yep. how you feel about Steve, mm. you're with Oscar, mm. and you're Oscar's buddy because of how you make Oscar feel about himself when he's around you. That's that's that's, hey, that's it. That's the secret sauce, right? That's there. the secret sauce. That's which it. is why, which is why the the scripts that we use, yeah, uh, are so effective is because it brings the attention back to them. That's right. And not, I'm going to come mow your yard. I'm going to wash your car. I'm going to take your dog for a walk. I'm going to, yeah. like, frankly, if I had a friend call me up and came over here and was walking my dog and washing my car, weird. mow my yard, doing all it'd this be weird. Stuff for me. Yeah, don't, yeah, don't, be don't like, do that. Let's just be buddies. Like, yeah, let, don't, don't come do. do a bunch of stuff. Sit down yeah. on the porch. Yeah, let's sit on the porch and 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 ha have a glass of wine or have a cigar or have a, a glass of water yeah. or just sit and chill right yeah, yeah. and i think the same thing in our our mortgage in, in, in our relationship so back to your question what value do i bring mm. uh how do i these these conversations with the re uh, referral partners i would say start that conversation by talking about them that's it that's it and let them talk about their favorite topic. Mm -hmm. And I find learn how to ask questions. That's it. Learn how to ask. Boy, wouldn't it be cool if there was like 88 
way our 88 little secret questions mm -hmm. uh so i've got a list of 88 questions all right what are we gonna do with it how, how are we gonna do this um let's do this and you you're gonna give it to everybody of, of course that's how we roll around here so what we'll do you know, here's a problem if you get the list of questions see there's two things Okay, tell me about it. There's there's traffic and there's conversion. Mm -hmm. Traffic, conversion. So learning how to ask questions is driving the traffic. Mm -hmm. Then you have to go through, sorry, now that I'm talking with those people, how do I convert that into referrals? How do I convert that into loans? And frankly, that's a longer conversation. Here, yeah. let's do this. Let's do this. Um, so we have a third partner, uh, Krista. Yeah, uh, that we work with and she works with us and she is fantastic at strategizing mm -hmm. uh so let's do this uh we'll send this list over to krista and krista will give you the list and she'll talk about how to turn Implement. those meetings yeah. Yeah. into referrals she'll walk you through that process and it's a it's a step-by-step -step process to do and yeah. I'll give you my 88 uh, questions. And dude, like when I do my podcast, like when I do my Super meetings, cool. oh yeah, these 88 questions, and you could ask these 88 questions, you could interview a plumber, you could interview a <laughs> roofer, you could interview a real estate agent, Yeah, you could use these to do podcasts, you could use yeah. these for coffee meetings, like, like you name it, these, I'm telling you, I spent the last 24 years putting together this list, it is, you want this list, I'm telling you. So go to, let's see, go to meetup with Krista as K-R-I-S-T-A. Meet, meet up with Krista. Dot com. Yep. And what that's going to do is it's going to take you to a little calendar and just book some time with her and she'll give you the list. So I'm, I'm getting ready to go send it to her right now. She'll give you the list and she'll talk to you about how to turn that, those questions into actual loans. That's it. That's uh, as, it. A, as a, as a free service, you go, Carl, what's the catch? There's no catch. No the only catch. catch is at the end of the call, she might say, Hey, would you like to do more of this? And, and we could talk about this one, but this one is our gift to you. And you're going to love talking to Chris. A lot of you have, have heard Krista uh, on the, uh, on the podcast Pre before podcast in the breakfast club yeah, in man. the breakfast club. She's like she's, she's, she's fantastic, super smart lady, been yeah. in the mortgage industry for a long time. So I yep. love hanging out with Krista. So meet, meet up, up with Krista, Krista.com. And that love thing that. causing you to hesitate to stop, hmm. push that disbelief to the side, hmm. make a simple, small decision and work on the next step to take you to the next level. So appreciate you guys. Appreciate you, Steve. All right, man. Great call. I mean, great podcast. Good stuff. So see you.